participated in changing this world. Now, how does one prepare for being an innovator? I would say three things. Three things are needed. The first thing is first rate technical knowledge. And not just about the narrow subject, as the PNN Saroop mentioned, but interdisciplinary. You should know something about the other disciplines also. So, first rate technical knowledge and skills. Skills are very important, otherwise, you can't be an innovator. Because if you want to do something, you should know how to do it. And innovators find new and different ways of doing things. So, first thing is good in technical subject in knowledge and skills of the subject plus allied subjects or allied branches. The second requirement is about awareness about the world. If you become aware of your society, what the needs are, then you figure out how you can solve those needs. So you need to identify needs, you need to know in what are the pain points in those needs, where technology can help, where technology cannot help. All that is discerning eye is needed and for that you have to be close to the needs. As it is said, you know, avashakta avishkar ki janani hai. The need is the mother of invention. So once you connect with the need, then you will come up with your invention or your innovation. There is a third thing also which is needed <coughs> and that third thing there is no good single word for it but it needs persistence. It needs confidence. It means ability to pursue an idea. Sometimes in short, one can say character. Character to persist with an idea, persist with an idea when others will tell, no, no, this is not going to work. Persist with it when there are difficulties, difficulties in making it, difficulties in solving a technical problem. So you need that grit, you need character to be able to pursue that idea even when others are telling you, no, no, this is not going to work. So these three things are needed. Technical knowledge and skills, awareness about the needs of the world, and third is character. So I will talk now about this third quality. There is a induction program that has been started with the initiative of AICT and it is expected it will start in all colleges in the coming years, perhaps starting from next year. Some colleges have even started it this year. In this induction program, for three weeks, there are no classes. When new students come, for three weeks, no classes. Can you believe this? Students, I'm talking to you. They are shaking their heads, they can't believe it. <laughs> and this has been done, this is an innovation. Now what do those students, what do the students do in those three weeks? Well, they are busy from morning 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. at night. And doing what? They go out, they get up early, go out and play, physical education, come back, have breakfast, and then they go to an art class, they pick one art form which they want to learn. It could be painting, it could be drawing, it could be music. Remember, creativity has no boundaries. Somebody who is good in imagining a painting may also be a very good in imagining a three-dimensional model of a machine. And somebody who is good in mathematics, <coughs> might also be very good in music. In fact, creativity transfers across areas. So, in this induction program, which is only a start, but hopefully this start will spread into 
programs that will continue for the four years. And AICT is already making a model curriculum which will implement all this for all the four years in different forms. So, so besides art, it's also a place where the people do bonding. Because students come into college, unfortunately after huge amount of competition. And sometimes competition of this kind is a cutthroat competition. And one becomes more individualistic. But life is not about being individual. Life is about working in a team, working together. And those of you who have been part of the project on which you have worked, and that project has brought you here, you would understand how important is teamwork. How important is taking responsibility. How important it is to know what team members' weakness is as well as strength is. And this is what is required in real life. The real life is not about entrance exam in which you have two minutes to solve a problem. Real life is about solving real problems and they require longer time frame. Innovation is all about that. It's about putting all these things together. So in this induction program, the idea is that students, it's a signal that you are entering now a new life, you are entering college, and in this new life, you should come out of this mode of competition and get into the mode of excellence. What is the difference between competition and excellence? In competition, you want to do better than the other guy. In excellence, you are focused on the problem you are working on. And you want to solve it in a way such that that innovation or that problem gets solved and whatever you are trying to achieve gets done. So excellence. And if you think about, so some people ask me, what would happen if there is no competition? How would mankind progress? And I ask one question. If you look at the human society history, Major advances that have come to human beings, they have come because of competition or because of excellence. You look at scientists, engineers who work tirelessly, and most of the time it was excellence. They were trying to solve a problem which could not be solved by anybody, by others, but they were focused on the problem, they were not bothered about others. And to achieve that, they had to work for excellence. So induction program also will try to achieve that. And of course through bonding, through going out and visiting local places, in also developing the student-teacher bond, something that has gone down in the last 25 years. That bond is so special. This bond between teacher and student is so special. And we want through these three weeks of induction program, we divide the students into groups of 20 each. And with every group, there would be one teacher, one faculty member, and two senior students. And they would work together, they would, and they would share thoughts with each other. To be able to do that, and of course, <coughs> there would be lectures by eminent people and so on. Uh, they would also go for uh, you know, cleaning their own hostel, cleaning their own room, visit to visit, and so on. But the thing which connects all this, and I come back to character, the thing which connects all this, there is also be a discussion group of these 20 students with the teacher, this, and they will be discussing what we have called as universal human values. So what is it? in me that I need to discover, which is there in everyone. And through that, through that process of discussion and also, of course, doing things, there would also be films and discussion over the films about specific points. And then there would be tasks which they would do. So in through this process of through discussion and applying things, doing tasks, there would be, we hope, a discovery of human values which is inside us. 
is not a, universal human values is not about giving values, it is about discovering values within ourselves. And all this actually goes to build character. It allows us to stand, it allows us to stand in the case of adversity, it allows us to connect with people, form teams, it allows us these universal human values, these sessions on about understanding of relationships, about understanding of society, and of course nature. And if you think about it, this is what is needed today in this next hundred years of innovation. Engineering is going to undergo a major change and the people who will make the change, the innovators, are the ones who would have mastered all three. They would be good in their te technical skills and knowledge, they would be aware about needs of society and they would have character. Only if you have character and strength, you would be able to carry through your innovation and carry through your innovation and then face the world and make the world a better place. So I thank you and thank Professor Sensubuddin and I hope that this together with the induction program and many other changes that you have initiated will create a change across the country in our technical education. Thank you.